And the next section we need to make is our nib section. So welcome back. So we'll be turning this into something like this. So the main point of it is the nib needs to be able to screw in, needs to be a certain shape, and the converter needs to be able to sit in there so that it can go into the barrel and be held securely. So first thing we need to do is mount it on the mandrel. So we use our, I mean on, on the collet chuck, so we use our 18 millimeter collet chuck screw that on and we want to make sure that we put it on with the line facing out because that's where it joins up and it just needs to go in a little bit tighten it up and make sure it's nice and tight there we go so first thing we need to start with is squaring up the end. So again with the lathe about 175, just give it a quick tap, quick touch. A nice square edge there. Again we're going to drill through the section there so it doesn't matter that there's a little button thing there. Again, you can also do that with your parting tool if you like. Let's find the carbide works quicker and easier. And now we need to just drill with our starter bit to give us somewhere for the to drill through later and then to also put the life center in. So it just needs a tiny small little hole there. So next thing we're gonna next thing we're gonna do is turn the tenon for this. So um, needs to be about five and a half six millimeters long, and then the diameter needs to be about nine point seven millimeters so that we can cut our threads. So I'll be using my uh, parting tool for this. Lathe running about 2500. Again, I'll start by just getting the length right. 100% critical how accurate it is as long as it's in the ballpark. So it's 5.7, so it's perfect. So 16, so now we need to go down to about 9.7. So we're using an M10 by 0.75 uh, thread on this. So in theory, it needs to be 10 millimeters, but you go a little bit underneath that. So I find about 9.7 millimeters um, is the best to give the smoother section. So stop regularly measure. If you go too small, then it's basically useless. So it's all 11. So now we have a bit of millimeter to go. Okay, 
Okay, so that's exactly 10 millimeters now. So we'll just take it down and make sure it's all nice and even. So like I said, I want about 9.7. I'm not even bored if I go a bit under that. I certainly wouldn't want it any smaller than 9.6. then with my thin parting tool, I will put a very small sort of recessed tenon right on the corner and make sure this is nice and square. I want to go down to about 9.3, 9.35. The reason for this is, is that the threads won't go all the way to the end, just the mechanics of it. And help screw it in. This is also why we drilled in with that 10mm bit into the end of the barrel. Okay. It's very important to make sure that this shoulder is square. The last thing you want is to have it sloping out. Otherwise it won't sit when you screw into the barrel evenly. Okay, 9.7, 9.68. And that could go a little bit deeper. Go. So now we need to cut the threads in here that we've got our tenon done. So we do that with our M10 5.75 die. And that will need to go into the die holder. So again, you always do it with the uh, writing facing outwards first. Make sure it's held in nice and securely. And they're nice and straight. My tail stock has a little bit of play left and right, so I always have to make sure I have it centered, otherwise, it won't cut cleanly. Um, so, again, a bit of WD 40 just on there. You can, if you like, polish this surface up, um, like what we did with the other place before we cut the, the threads. Uh, I don't bother because it's not a surface that is visible in use of the pen you only see it when you're removing the nib section so I don't bother but I know there are other people that do so again two hands going in opposite directions cuts nicely you can see the curling shavings coming out you can feel it cutting and you just have to be careful when you get to the end that you stop when you when it hits up against, don't keep turning. Sometimes it will keep turning and you'll basically just rip your threads out and you'll have to throw it away and start again. When it gets to there, you just basically unscrew it. And you got some nice threads there. Clean it up. Get all the mess out of there. Just run it over it a second time. Just be careful you don't cross thread it. Out. And then we'll flip the die around and do it backwards. To make sure we're a nice clean cut. So 
more WD-40. Okay, so I'm just going straight on. Don't really need to, because it's already mostly 90% cut. I don't need to do the backwards and forwards thing too much. And so they'll also cut it a little bit closer to the shoulder to help with the threading on. Nice, clean. And always do a test fit. Make sure it's going on nicely. There you go. Looks like we even ended up with it lined up nicely, coincidentally. There you go, so that's done for the threads. It's a little bit tight getting to the end. You can sort of hear that sound, plastic rubbing, so the resin rubbing against each other. So what I'll do is I'll take that down there a little bit. You don't want to go down too deep um, because otherwise that's a weak point that you can break. So I'll just really quickly do that. Test. And that's going much nicer now. And if you twist it like that, you should hopefully see the barrel not wave about at all. Should move, should be dead straight. That means you've got the um, shoulder here straight and then also the straight of the barrel, the end, the end of the barrel flush. If either of those two aren't flush, then it'll sort of sit on a bit awkwardly and the barrel will move about as you spin it around. So next thing we need to do is drill a hole through it. So this will be for the two things. Um, so for the converter, it needs to be pushed in through here. So it needs to be big enough for this sort of size here. Um, and then we also want it this right size for when we cut the threads later. So it means we use a 7mm bit. I actually use a 7.1mm bit because I know that that drills, for me, a 7mm hole and works the best. So we've got our um, starter hole that we used drilled before. So it's multi-purpose that it gives us somewhere for our live center as well as for our drill bit to start in nicely. So make sure it's all nicely lined up. Lathe speed to 175. Just be careful starting it because there's already part of a hole there, so it does have a tendency to sort of suck the drill bit in and chip. So it's a nice slow feed. back and forth and just until you get it all drilled out. So the main, um, so only really the first 10-15 millimeters that is super critical that we get accurate. After that from the other side we're going to drill in with a bigger drill bit so it doesn't really matter too much but this part here, which is where we'll be cutting threads later, is what we need to be accurate. But we're just going to go all the way through. This gives us a reference point for when we turn the piece around. There we go, the filter's going through. Depending on the material and how 
circular and perfectly circular it is. Um, sometimes I will actually turn a new tenon on here, just down about half a millimeter. Um, while it's sort of in this position, that way it is all relative to the threads on here. And that way when we turn around, it'll be the right size. Um, but the diamond cast, I know that it is 99% um, of the time, perfect, almost perfectly circular, that when I turn around is that it's going to be accurate enough. Okay, so I've got the piece out. Um, so what we need to do is work on it from the other end now. Uh, first thing we need to do is size it. So obviously we cut the pieces off a little bit longer than what we need. Um, so basically I've marked on here with a bit of um, Nico and we need to turn it down to there. Um, previously I used to put it in the uh, mandrel to do this part, but I've actually found that it works much better, much safer in the collet chuck. So uh, basically put it in there, I like to line up the line with the writing on the top of the collet chuck just so I won't know where it is. Make sure it's nice and tight. And so again you could do this with your parting tool, I choose to do it with my carbide barrel trimmer, it's just what works best for me. So what we want to see is when we twist this that the hole is exactly centered, which it is. I can see it waving about a bit but that's because it's not square. So we just need to take this to the right size. See the mark as it's turning. Check. This dimension is it 100% critical if you're off by a millimeter, half a millimeter or so. Not that big a deal. Okay, so we've got that done. So, what we need to do now is replicate the shape and size of this housing on the inside of this piece. So we've already drilled through with a seven millimeter drill bit from the other end. Um, so that's the correct size for cutting these threads. So what we need to do now is drill out this section here. So a 5 16th bit is the perfect size for me. So basically I've got a mark there and that is from the very top down to the top of the threads there. So I've got that marked on there. This is probably one of the most difficult parts that you'll explode things. I find having it held in the collet chuck like this gives it nice lots of support. There's still lots of material there. Um, so you get a nice sort of clear crisp cut. Um, I previously I used to turn it down to size and then drill with it on the mandrel. Um, the material can expand and stuff and especially some of the materials will split quite easily. So this is the safest way of doing it without it breaking. So line it up and make sure I've extended my quill enough that I can remove this drill bit and put in the other one so that I keep the same relative um, point just because my tailstock moves a bit. So check to make sure it's nice and square. Lots of WD-40. Okay, again at what, about 175. And then drill in slowly to start off with. So you're taking a 7mm hole to roughly 8mm. So you'll get these just tiny little ribbons come off it. Just like that. And now I'm going to go about halfway in to the line. Off. So that was a 5 16th, it was about 8 millimeters. Um, that is the to be slightly over the diameter of that, so it's about 7.5 sort of thing. Where's the little bit? It's about around about 8, so it's close enough. So next is the 
uh, sort of collar sort of bit here. So it's only a couple of millimeters deep. So we use an 11, 11 32th bit for that. So I don't have this marked. So as long as I just go in enough, um, you know, and I'll get it right. It doesn't matter if it's too deep. The other one, it is very critical that you go the right amount. If you go in, go in past the line, then you'll be removing sections where you'll be cutting threads. So there'll be less threads to hold the um, section in, the, um, the nib in. Whereas this, if you go a little bit too deep, it doesn't, doesn't matter too much, but you don't want to go all the way in. Right, so again, 175. So I want to go into about there. See that? And then last bit we want to do is the very top collar bit. So it's a tiny little thing. You can see it's only half a millimeter deep. Um, so we use a 23 64th or nine millimeter bit. Um, the new Joe housings um, that I've just gotten recently are a tenth of a millimeter bigger in all the dimensions. So by finding that doing it this way, I'm getting cleaner, crisp, more accurate cuts. Um, so it is critical that you get this right. You don't want it to go too deep because you want it to sit flush, but you don't want it recessed, the nib recessed in. But we also have to take into account that we'll be polishing this end bit and sanding it later. So we do need to have it go slightly further in than what, what it appears. Literally touch it in. So I have a spare empty housing and basically I put it in this way and then I can see whether it's going in enough and it's sort of going to go in a bit. So it'll give us a, bit, a little bit of leeway to sand and polish a bit off later. Last thing to do is to cut the threads. So we need to cut these threads now. So I've got my tap. So the M7.5 5.5 for the Joe number six, which is nice and tight. So I need to have it loose in here. So we'll clear that out. Just give it a quick clean in there to make sure there's no gunk. WD-40 on the inside, WD-40 on the tap. And then just move this up. So first of all I just push it in until it stops, so that's where the 7mm um, the hole starts. And then gently just turn the tail, the um, headstock. I don't need to do the backwards and forwards thing with this because it's quite a fine thread. Um, okay, we go in until I can see the end of the, um, the, the thing disappear, that way I know that it's gone in enough. So very gently pull it out. So 0.5 is quite a narrow pitch thread. So then I carefully pull out the shavings that are cut for the threads. Quick clean with some paper towel to get rid of the WD-40 so that we get an accurate representation of how it twists in. And then we test fit our nib. So it should, should be tightish, but I'm going to be able to turn sort of easily. Obviously the nibs are fairly fragile, so you don't want to be having to really twist it. There we go, so it's in nice centre. You can see that it's recessed slightly in there. You don't want it sticking out above. We want it going in or flush. Um, so now we, we will be able to sand that down to match the right dimensions. So basically take it out. And... Now all we need to do with this is turn it to size. Okay, so now that we've got all the internal stuff done on here, what we need to do is basically turn this, turn this to be the right shape to be able to fit on, fit in. So um, it's probably the most delicate part for doing this. So we're going to use our mandrel. and put it on here. So this is where I was saying that you can get away without this mandrel. What you could in theory do, and I have done it a few times, is turn this bit in between centers. 
Um, so obviously you need to be quite careful applying pressure into here though, uh, too much pressure and it will split. Um, but it can be done and I've done it you know, several times. So that is a way of getting away without this one. Uh, just put that in there like that. Tighten, don't over tighten. So you want to screw it on as much as you can. Um, we do run into a problem later on that the outside diameter of the mandrel is bigger than the um, final diameter of this. So we will have to untighten it a bit to give us a little bit of room there. Um, that's one of the advantages of turning it between centers that you don't have that problem. Eventually the corner of that mandrel actually wears away and you get enough room to do it without it. Um, but having it pressed up against it gives you the most um, strength when holding it. Um, so if you're going to break anything while turning, it is going to be your nib section. Um, I've broken more of these than any of the other parts of the pen. Um, so the longer that you can have it turning fully screwed in, the better. Okay, so make sure you get it. Where? So I'm going to turn off the extractor on with this just because it makes it so much easier for me. Um, but yeah, there's not really too much to say. Basically, um, dimensions shape wise, as long as it's small enough to fit inside the barrel, but bigger than the inside holes, you can sort of do any shape that you like. Um, I like to do what's called this sort of hourglass shape is my personal preference with a sort of slight curve over but again that's purely my personal preference I know a lot of other people either do sort of straight or with a little sort of ridge on the end a okay, nice sharp skew um, so you would have to be really careful to avoid catches or anything on this um, so even the slightest catch can crack your threads in your nib section and ruin it so I always like to take it nice and slow and just make sure you get it all done. I've got it sort of flushed down with the mandrel now, so it's about as much as I can do on that end without loosening it. So, it's sitting about 12.3, it needs to be about 12, so it fits inside the cap. I don't want to go too much more than that.
do much more of this until I unscrew it. So I'll loosen the power stop on. Unscrew it a little bit so there's a bit of a gap there. Um, and then I'll retighten it. We'll change the concentricity a little bit of it, but uh, by turning again now we'll fix it all up. So we're about 15 here or something. So we need to go down to about 12. So that's where we need to be a bit more careful. Just got a little bit less support. up quite high for using the skew but I can get away with that. So we'll just stop and lower it. Seven, so I really need about 12. So the Chinese bit off. So what we'll do now, we'll take this off and we'll actually test it inside a cap. Um, so I would, my normal process, I would actually normally have the cap drilled out before I turn this part of the nib section so I could test it inside the actual cap. Um, but I haven't done that yet, just because I'm doing a different order for this video. So I'll use this cap from this one. So I can sort of see that it's a bit tight there. It does go in, but it's a bit too tight there. And if I turn it around that way, it will go in. So it means my dimension um, on that end is fine. Um, but I need to take a little bit more off here. Um, so and I'll actually do that with sandpaper now. So I'll go back on here. Try and get to about the same spot so you don't get any wobble. So now we just need to sand, I need to sand this down just to make sure it's the right size to be able to fit in. Um, also take off a little bit from there so the nib sits flush in there and then just sand polish. So again I'll start with 400. Again you want to be reasonably gentle because it's only held in just by a few threads there. the edge, this top edge as well, and then just make sure it's all nice and smooth, smooth, even curve. So there we go, so it goes on, there's enough room there, it doesn't need to be tight, um, basically I want it as big as I can make it but with it still fitting inside the cap easily. It doesn't need to be touching the cap or anything like that. So I can see that goes on quite nicely. So now I just need to sand it and get it all nice and smooth and pretty. So it's 400. Now it's 500. It 
should be um, stopping and sanding later. It can be a little bit hard on such a small item. Okay, 600. thousand Looking dry. So 2500. Just needs a quick go. So a quick clean. I'm gonna get some polish. First application in a bit more. And crank the speed up. A bit more, give a buff. And on to the next. It doesn't, doesn't take long to go through the various steps of this polish, especially when it's such a small item that you're polishing. See this polish go on, and we're done. So that we've got all done. I'll just clean up the inside there a bit. Okay, 
electrodes. So test, test with our nib. See how accurate we are. So there we go. So it's, it's probably a little bit more inside than I'd really like, but should sound a little bit more off, but that's okay. I can live with that. And that's done. So now this will attach on here. You'll also get to see whereabouts the nib lines up with the body. Um, if for whatever reason you had a feature somewhere on the body that you uh, wanted to wind up with the nib or showing on the back or something like that, um, the way to adjust that is what stops it, what shows it, is this surface here. So if you were to sand off this surface here, make that shorter, that will change where the where it stops. So you'll be able to line that up that way. Um, so depending on what you're trying to line up, um, whether you're trying to line up the resin all the way through for some sort of pattern, or if there's sort of something on the body that you want showing upwards, you can adjust it that way. It can be quite tedious to do and I don't bother most of the time. There we go, we're done with the, the nib section. So join me in the next video for the cap. Thank you.